So this is what we're making, a get me home ring with the uh, latitude and longitude of where you want to go or where you live. Subtle and comfortable to wear. And it, it doesn't actually have to be a ring. You could just turn it into a pendant by putting it on a chain. But I like it. Very, very subtle. So the first thing we're going to do is get the latitude and longitude of where we are. Now, if you have an iPhone with the compass, on the bottom, it, it will give you the latitude and longitude of where you are. Um, if you don't have this, you can just Google uh, where, where am I in the world, and it, it will give you these same uh, dimensions. So when you get all of your numbers, what you have to do is get your ring, and your ring shank has to be big enough that you can put all of these numbers and symbols on. So what I'm using is a 10 millimeter wide, 0.7 thick piece of metal, sterling, and I've gotten the diameter, which is, for me, is 19 millimeters, added 0.7, multiplied by 3.14, and this, this is my length. So what I'm going to do now is set this up so that I can stamp these uh, numbers and symbols in. So I'll have to measure the center of my ring shank put a line down the middle, and there are enough numbers that what I'm going to do is start in the middle and work left and right so that they are centered evenly. So I'm just going to measure the length of this, and you should know because you've measured your ring shank. So for me it's uh, 62, so it'll be 31 for the middle. And then 5 millimeters because it's a 10 millimeter wide shank. And you just hook the top edge over and drag the back. You have this nice mark both ways. And what I'm going to do is use double-sided tape to hold this on my uh, steel block. Handy stuff, double-sided tape. Just make sure that everything is grease-free, otherwise it won't stick. Now, you need to count your letters and your numbers so that a degree mark is one, a minute mark is one, seconds is one, and S. So, eight, that's quite easy. So, four on either side. And I'm going to put one set of letters and numbers on top of the line and one set below the line. It, it's the way they normally position the latitude and longitude. So just use your steel rule and use permanent ink. Because if you use water-based ink, your perspiration will just rub it off. Now, I need a degree mark, and we can use a nail set, because it is, is just a circle, so a small nail set. And for the minute and second mark, what I'll do is take a piece of steel and file it so that it's just 
a small straight mark. So that's my little straight bit that will either be minutes or seconds. So what I need is to start in the middle and work my way back. So seven minutes. And I put the seven halfway between the top and the line if I can. And then my little minute mark. And you're just going to have to do this by eye. And then work your way backwards. So now it's my little degree mark. And a two and a three. So just work left and right. Get all of this as as lined up as you can. Because it's going to be an anticlastic ring, it's not that critical, but do your best. Now I'm using the uh, one and a half millimeter high, sixteenth inch letters and numbers, and you can see that it fits quite easily in my ten millimeter wide ring. Now, we've work hardened this where the letters and numbers are, and be sure you get this accurately stamped because this, for fun, this is to get you home. And if you've put something on a degree or a minute out, it's going to put you somewhere else. So, you'll have to anneal this again, and I hallmark mine now because where I'm hallmarking it, it's still annealed. And as I'm tidying this up, if there are any little bumps from the hallmark on the other side, I can tidy it up now. So now we need to anneal it. The fact that you haven't distorted the ends means that it should be fairly close. You might want to file it and check it at this point using your Swiss number two cut flat hand file just to make sure it's perfectly flat, both ends. That one was a little bit off. Check it against the smooth side of your file to make sure it's nice and flat. And now we can anneal it and form it into a ring. So once you've annealed the metal, take your flat half round pliers. Half round goes on the inside. And just bend it into a, a bit of an oval but just so the ends match up perfectly. So do all of your pushing and pulling and twisting and whatever you need to do to get these to line up perfectly and to make sure that there's no twist in the middle. So we want, we want the sides to be as even as possible. Otherwise, when you're trying to file or sand out the lump, the metal will get too thin. So get it as close as you can. And if there's a little bit of a gap, what I do is I use my ring bending pliers just come opposite the join, give it a small squeeze, 
and it'll bring those two ends together. So now we're ready to solder. So I've put the joint up. Mix up your flux. Make sure it's nice and creamy. And just a little line on the top and on the inside. And what I'm going to do is put my solder on the top and heat it from underneath so it draws it through. Hard solder. And it's a little more than is necessary, but that's all right. It's on the outside. It's easy to clean it off. So I'm just quickly on and off to dry out the flux. And now I'm just heating from underneath. Make sure that the solder touches both sides of the ring. And I switch to the other side just to make sure that the solder flows both ways. And you can see that there's a little a little bit of an excess on top, no drama. So we're going to quench it. Have a look at the inside and you should see a nice solder line on the inside where the the metal has actually flowed through to the inside of the ring. So pickle it and then we'll round it up and sand it back. So come out of the pickle, rinse it, dry it, always dry it, and we're going to put it on our ring mandrel, just push it down as far as you can, use your rawhide hammer, flip it over, and make it nice and round. Now, I'm going to use 400 grade wet or dry paper on a sanding stick and just follow the curve of the ring. And we want to get all of the solder off. So when you look at it, you should see just the faintest line across where the solder is. If you don't get all of the solder off, what will happen is after a couple of days it will oxidize and you'll, you'll see this darker spot where the solder is. Now, I'm using a split mandrel on my handpiece with the 400 grade paper. And this is just to tidy up the inside of the ring. So we just spin it up and sand our solder joint off on the inside so that it's invisible. And always keep moving this back and forth as, as you're using it, otherwise you'll end up sanding little depressions in and that's not what we want. We want it to be nice and smooth. You can turn it around, work from the other side. And you can see that it's no visible join. Now, my metal was slightly off, so you can see I have a little bit of a ridge here. So we're just going to take a piece of 400 grade paper, put it on our bench, make sure there are no little lumps underneath. And just sand until you can see 
a nice dull line all the way around so sand until you can't see this join anymore. Well that's good. I have the edges so that they meet perfectly and I'm just going to go around the outside edge at about a 45 degree angle but just to make sure that it isn't sharp or rough and now we're going to do a quick uh, anti-clastic shape using a doming punch now this is the quick way to form this but it will also stretch the ring if you try to make it too big so what we're going to do is move it the smallest amount possible and you can see the size of the doming punch in relation to the ring that I'm using so I'm just going to a couple of hits that way and you can see how much it's domed already we don't want much flip it over do the other side. Now, it's now an anti-clastic shape. It's not very deep and because we've used our doming punch it's perfectly round and so now what we're going to do is just polish this up and we're finished. So I've just polished it up on the Tripoli um, I'm not even going to polish it up on rouge. I think it is shiny enough. And I usually don't polish the inside. I just leave it a satin finish.